just apologize ahead of time because I may not use proper terminology. Please reference your shop manual. But, um, just wanted to make note of a few things. This is kind of a turning point since I'll be putting on the Honda Bond uh, sealant before I seal the crankcase. So I'm just doing a triple check to make sure I have everything in that I want to do in because I don't really want to have to take it apart. There is a tensioner for this that mounts right underneath here. And you can maybe hear that. It has a little piece right there. You can see that bolt right there. So that bolt is one of three bolts that holds in this tensioner that sits under here. And if I remember correctly, it has the function of moving oil because as it moves, it pushes up and down a little piston. Just wanna make sure that was known. Let's see what else. Putting everything back together here on, this, on the shifting linkage stuff is pretty straightforward for the most part. Pictures in the manual are pretty clear. It's in first gear right now. Um, in the manual it says it's best to assemble the transmission in first gear or it makes it easier, I guess. So that's what I did. Um, new seals. Uh, one goes here, one goes there, and then the other one is here. And then also new seal here. Um, there is no seal right there. That's not on there. So waiting to put these in, I'm gonna apply the Honda Bond to the edges of this. Um, that's what they say to do in the Haynes manual, and it seems like a lot of people agreed. So I'm gonna be doing that on these, cleaning off the oil and then putting Honda Bond before putting it along all the edges and then putting the cases together. So I'm gonna make sure I have everything else sorted out. These are all torqued to spec um, and should be ready to go. There was no torque spec for this um, retaining plate. I don't know if you can, my goodness. There was no torque spec for that. It just said to tighten and to use thread lock. That's what it said in the manual. So that's what I did. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is kind of a waypoint. So just want to make an in-between video. So we'll go ahead and put the case together and get cracking on the top okay so these are all my bags of stuff they're all labeled before I put the crank case back together um, just going through all my bags to make sure I'm not missing a single washer or bolt that would go inside the crank case and require me to take it apart again later because I don't want to have to do that after I put in the Honda bond um, and rejoin and torque the entire case. So, just gonna go back through all of these real quick. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything that goes inside. few things I actually forgot to mention. When I first put the crank together, I got one or maybe it was two of the connecting rods backwards. So just make sure your connecting rods are facing the right direction. There's little marks on them and they say which way they should be pointing. I believe the mark is towards the rear of the case. Don't quote me, check your manual. Um, but I did have to take those apart real quick and then put them back together. This engine is pretty heavy, so 
So it is kind of hard once you get the crankcase together to move it around and work on it, especially once you put the oil pan and um, bottom sections together. I don't have that together here because it's perfectly flat on the bottom and makes it easier to work with. I would recommend creating a small frame or jig that you can bolt to the engine mounting points. Uh, that's what I did. I just used some scrap wood that I had around and built a little frame. So I'd recommend doing that. That way you can turn it on its sides. It'll be stable. If you're wondering what I'm doing with the airbrush, uh, I just use it to clear dust and, um, in this case, dry alcohol that I use to remove oil. Um, yeah. Also a good idea to make sure and blow the moisture or water out of bolt holes. Uh, I've never seen it happen, but supposedly you can crack a case by tightening a bolt when there's liquid in it. Um, don't quote me, I just heard that from a YouTuber and maybe it's superstitious, but I figure just better safe than sorry. These rebuild time lapses are going to be a little bit long, but I intentionally wanted to make them not too fast because I wanted people to be able to see what I'm actually doing. Um, I haven't found too many rebuilds for this particular engine on YouTube that have good footage for following along, so I was kind of hoping this can be that. Um, if you get lost or I skip something that you wanted to see, you can definitely just leave me a comment and I can see if I can get to it. Um, help you uh, best I can, but I'm not particularly experienced and this is my first time rebuilding this engine, so, you know, no guarantees. It was pretty tricky finagling the case on and then getting the getting the rods up through in the right place and the chain and then trying to wiggle it into position. There was a couple um, a couple gears that just did not want to like sit, sit nicely. Uh, and then the two studs on the end were kind of like uh, having some issues. But after a while, just kind of slowly wiggling it around and take your time, uh, you'll eventually get it. And it'll just kind of sit down, plop down there. After you get it attached and seated, just giving the crank a little bit of a spin and just check and make sure that everything is turning as it should. I just, here you can see, I just grabbed the, grabbed the clutch and spun it a little bit. Once you get a couple of these top bolts on, not torquing them or anything, but just tight enough to keep the case together, I went ahead and flipped it on its side. Uh, the manual recommends starting at the bottom, and there is a specific bolting pattern for the crankcase in which you torque them. I went through and just basically hand tightened them initially. Um, you can see me using the little Milwaukee here uh, wrench thing, but. I did not like the instant I would get it very close but I wouldn't actually tighten them with that it was just to kind of get them speed things up I guess 
And some people may not approve of that, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't bother me. And then after hand tightening everything, just checking to make sure I wasn't missing any bolts, and then following along with the manual to make sure I did torque them in the correct um, order. Thank you. 
Initially, during the deconstruction of the engine, I used these little wedges, these little pump wedges, to move the case around, move the engine around, and not damage anything. And it kind of allowed me to kind of wiggle it around and um, work on it. And that's what I did here too, but I did eventually build a box, build a wooden chassis kind of like for it to sit on because as I was torquing things, I found it rather annoying when the case would just kind of like move around. So these little wedges are great though to just have around. Um, I used them for all kinds of stuff, including actually splitting the case um, or splitting the head actually, which was worse. Getting the head off of the case, I would pull it up a little bit and then put a wedge in and pump it up and pull it up a little bit and then pump it a little more and that was like the only way and it took me a, quite a long time that was the, probably the most difficult part of the deconstruction was removing the um, cylinders um, the top end thinking about you lately. I miss you. Call me back. So I actually had to put the clutch together like three or four different times. Uh, I got kind of frustrated with it, couldn't figure out what was wrong, kept doing it the same way over and over again, checking my manual, both manuals, over and over again. Uh, turned out nothing was wrong at all, I just had to adjust the small screw that presses down on the center of the clutch. So. I had it too far, I had it backed out, so it wasn't engaging the clutch when you pulled on the little clutch lever on the outside. Once you adjust that, it should be fine. Um, 
I mean, It'll be hard, especially if you replace your uh, clutch springs <laughs> like I did. Uh, I actually only replaced half of my clutch that. springs. I did every other one. I didn't want to destroy my left hand and some other guys had said that's not a bad idea. So I have three old ones and three new ones to kind of not make it as crazy tight. Um, yeah, I can always pull it off and put the other three on later if I want easy enough to get to. These little o-rings were um, kind of hard to get in. Uh, I used this little tool to kind of poke them in, but I did not use the sharp end. I used the like little curved edge to kind of like nudge, nudge them in. I tried not to poke them. I didn't want to like tear them, but they were kind of tough to get in, uh, but I did eventually eventually get it. They looked a little uneven though, but I think it'll be fine. Here I'm just kind of cleaning things up a little bit. There's a little bit of um, Honda bone squeezing out the front. So I just kind of like Pulled it off. It's kind of like a rubbery, rubbery material after it dries. So you kind of just roll it off. The camera gets a little crazy here because I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm really close to it, and I'm, my hands are going in front of it, and the autofocus is kind of going nuts. But this is the final assembly of the clutch. Um, I believe this was the last time I did it, and I went ahead and just put it together, and was like, oh well. And that was when I realized later on that it was just the um, adjustment of the nut on the outside, so.
Okay, I wanted to take a moment just to talk about the timing. I tried to do it once already and then started making the video and realized I actually messed up the timing. <laughs> so I stopped the video, fixed it, and then, uh, yeah, so this is how it works. So when you're putting the head back together, um, you want to make sure everything is in top dead center. Um, that means outer most pistons one and four are going to be at the highest position. Um, if you look right here, uh, no, it's kind of hard to see, but inside there, yeah, it's kind of tough to see. Also, I actually, you can't see it right now because it's not top dead center right now because I was adjusting something. So let me just fix that. top dead center these lobes are both pointing towards the center and these marks here are both horizontal and if we look here oh I guess just off by a hair right there okay so if you look inside as you see a little T mark there's an arrow above it pointing to it so that shows we're in top dead center we got the outermost pistons at the top we got the lobes pointing in right here. Oh man, I'm gonna have to clean that up. And then, so what you wanna do is, <clears throat> you wanna put this put this cam on. Um, obviously make the tensioners as loose as you can. I'm gonna pull, that. what you're gonna do that for that is basically this tab right here you're gonna to want to pull up on it so you're gonna vice grip on this little tiny thing and it's gonna pull up okay and that's gonna loosen this main um, chain coming from the crankcase the timing chain I think and then this chain which you can see is loose right now because I haven't set the tensioner um, you'll do this chain probably what after last or do this chain last so um, you're gonna to wanna to unbolt this sprocket. You're gonna to wanna to unbolt this sprocket. Let me see if I can get some more light. <coughs> unbolt this sprocket from the, from the um, exhaust cam. <clears throat> Make sure you're in top dead center. Slide this sprocket over. Get this chain kinda of up and out of the way so it's over here so you can turn this freely. This cam is not gonna to wanna to sit flat because of the lobes. So, um, it won't want to sit flat in this position because it'll be pressing down on these right here so it'll want to push up until you tighten it so what you do is you want to take the outermost retainers um, E and A I want to go ahead and tighten those just 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 enough to press down on the on the camshaft I'm not gonna torque them or anything but just enough obviously more than hand tight but just enough until the cam is flat and then once the cam is flat you'll see it kind of like sit down and it'll kind of like tilt a little bit so once you do that then you can check your top dead center and you can bring the chain up onto the sprocket here up onto this sprocket and then you can bring the sprocket onto the camshaft and go ahead and bolt those guys on right there and then when you do this put use it's the manual says to use a loctite on these bolts so um, I need to I'll do that real quick right after this but um, go ahead and use loctite on those bolts and once you get this sprocket on and this camshaft is properly timed so this these marks right here these marks are horizontal to the case not to not to the ground to the case and then there's two marks mark here and a little mark right there like little dots those will also be horizontal and then you'll be at top dead center at the engine and so once you get that as close as you possibly can you're gonna go ahead and do your intake so same process basically it helps if you unbolt this sprocket make sure your tensioner is loose put your cam in get it into the position with the lobes pointing here and it's flat so it lighten the way make sure these notches are horizontal again and these lobes are pointing towards the center on the on this um, on cylinder four, I think it is, and then opposite here. So opposite here, 
opposite here, right? <clears throat> you can put the outer ones on, which is going to be F and L. And go ahead and tighten those down just enough. Don't torque them, obviously. Um, and then you can slip the chain onto the sprocket. And then you can put the sprocket on onto the camshaft. So once you get the sprocket on the shaft, you may notice that these are not perfectly aligned. They're like just a little bit off. What you can do is you can take the sprocket off again. You can um, use, I, I turn, I crank it from here because it's the easiest spot. You, I think it's one of the best spots because you have good leverage and this is pretty sturdy. And then so you get your 17 mil right here and you can just kind of crank the engine as needed. And so you can move this around so that um, you match these marks on both camshafts. Don't worry about it not being at top dead center anymore because as long as you match this one to this one, you'll be fine because this one is already matched to this. So this one is already matched to top dead center. So you just need to match this one to this one and you'll be set. So you can finagle that around with your wrench, moving it, moving the position of the pistons um, until this one matches this one. Once you do that, you can go ahead and bolt this sprocket on and then that's pretty much it. Um, it's not that hard, but I don't think the directions in the manual are particularly good because it's just hard. You're fumbling around and like the, the camshafts don't want to sit flat in the position they need to and whatnot. It can be a pain. Also, make sure when you torque these retainers that you have a good torque wrench. Mine is absolute garbage. It's absolute piece of trash. And the reason I say that is this. Look at that. Sheared right off. I am so lucky that this came out. And what happened was I was starting to torque everything down and my torque wrench failed. It wouldn't click. It got stuck. I don't know. It's cheap. It's garbage. Um, here's the bottom of the bolt stuck right here in this hole. <clears throat> I thought it was, I thought I was done for, right? Um, asked some questions in the forums on Facebook and whatnot, got some advice and then went ahead and went for it and I drilled a very small hole in the center of this bolt that had broken off down in this hole and then gently after applying some PB blaster I gently tapped this punch into the hole so it was wedged in and then very carefully I turned that punch out the um, broken bolt came out so I'm gonna have to go pick up a new 10 mil a new bolt here for the retainer um, but shouldn't be much of a problem Just be careful. Don't buy a cheap torque wrench. But yeah, that's timing issues. That's how that's how you got to do it um, These tensioners can be a little bit of a pain to work with kind of finagling on them and trying to get them loose enough to where you can actually work unloosening them and whatnot and doing it over and over again take it slow and uh, it's not too bad I gotta clean up a little bit here because there was a little bit of aluminum from when I drilled the hole so probably gonna pop this cam out one more time and make sure that's nice and clean so just wanted to go over that so somewhere along the way I lost a little bit of footage and it wasn't much it was just the very very end of me putting on the valve cover which is just the top eight bolts and then putting the alternator cover back on which is also just three bolts and it's not too bad or four so not too bad at all hope this was helpful <laughs> helped me watching it again, to be honest.